Hey guys, what's up? So, I guess there's not a lot of people that fix 3D printers. Um, at least in my area. I'm getting a lot of calls about them. So, here's another printer right here. Uh, it's a Crowley, Crowley Enter 3. And it looks like the original version. Looks like it might have some upgrades on it. Um, so, the customer uh, was trying to get a BL Touch going on this thing and said he couldn't get it to go. So, I don't know if the firmware is correct or what it is. I don't even know what kind of mainboard it has. So I don't even know what kind of drivers it has, nothing. So uh, I'm gonna fire this thing up and see if it uh, can do a G29 command. So if it can do a G29 command and it starts moving around, then I'll know the guy actually put the right firmware in there. But if it doesn't respond to G29, then I'll know there is something going up. Yeah, I got something going. So I mean, Ender threes are all right. I mean, it's like a really entry level printer. There's only one axis on there, one Z axis. And actually, another one I had done, the guy had actually upgraded to a second Z-Rod here. Uh, you know, lead screw. And it had a belt on there to keep them in sync. Uh, just let me look at that. You're never going to have any sort of, like, major quality with that much movement. So, um, that and just, it needs tensioners. Just the, this whole, the whole wheel design, it's a horrible design. You know, just too much room, too much slop. Um, I mean, linear rails are way better. But, okay, so let's get this going. I'm using an iProtter face on here. And... Just want to make sure the axis move up and down. Do Z. Alright, that works. Let's try the uh, bed. Yeah, this is also an 8-bit board, too, so... Yeah, hear how loud that is? I, I can tell it definitely doesn't have a dry dynamic driver in it. It's not one of those silent boards. Yeah, what's that? That's super noisy. Okay, so um, let's do a let's home this thing. So I'm gonna go back and G twenty eight, and that should actually home. That should home it. Yeah, listen how noisy it is. It's been a while since I've worked on a printer with uh, these older drivers. Like all my my first computer, my printer bought actually had the the super loud, you know. <laughs> Guess I'm kind of spoiled with the Trinamics. Okay, that's really okay. Yeah. Uh, error. Printer stop due to errors. Yeah. Okay, so there's something up with the firmware. So. I gotta take this cover off. Let's to power this thing off. So I gotta make sure it's wired correctly and has the right firmware on it. So even just a, D a G28 would still come down and it would probe. And then if you hit G29, it would go back and probe the bed. Alright, so it has, it has the new 5 pin connector right here. Uh, newer style, like, well, the Creality, like a proprietary 5 pin connector. Like your typical normal BL Touch would actually use the Z end stop and a combination of the servo pins, but they try to put the end stop and the servo pins on one thing. So, you know, you need to use a... I either have to custom compile Marlin, like I did on that CR10, with the uh, SKR E3 mini board upgrade. Or, I gotta just copy over a hex file, because it's an 8-bit board, right? So, I can't just upload a hex or uh, a firmware to it. I'm gonna have to either copy a hex over or custom build uh, Marlin. So, um, it's, it looks like it's a 2.2 board. So, I'm going to see if I can get a BL Touch firmware. Yeah, for, for a Creality that's already compiled. If not, then I'll, I'll compile it from scratch. But, hopefully not. Actually, I saw the numbers were wrong, actually. It's a, actually a 32-bit board. You can see by the ARM processor right there. The ST ARM processor. And it's actually a 4.2.2. At first, I thought it was a 2.2 board. It's a version 2.2. I don't know if it's... I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. Alright, so it is a 32 board. I'm going to flash the firmware on it. It is stopped. Got a printer error. The BL Touch. Yeah, this is actually running the old uh, 4988 driver. It's Allegro. That's why it's so noisy. What's weird is the 4.2.2 board came with either Trinamic 2208s, 2205s, or no, 2225s, or these Allegros. So, this is probably the worst of the. Uh, 4.2.2 boards. 
All right, so in part of the upgrade process, I actually had the customer buy this uh, 4.2.7 board. Um, yeah, the 4.2.2 board was just a headache because it, they used multiple drivers. And, I mean, so each... The problem is, if you have different drivers, each a driver requires different firmware. And it's hard to differentiate what... It doesn't even say what drivers what on their, on their page, so... Kind of rambling. But, uh, so yeah, let's open this up. Yes. So, I mean, these boards are pretty much exactly the same. It just, these actually, this runs the newer Trinamic drivers. <clears throat> and there's a few improvements, but really I wanted a board that had the 5-pin connector because they actually had the, uh, the uh, Creality branded uh, BL Touch, which has the 5-pin connector. So, I right, already have the heat sinks on it, so it should be just a direct swap. Yeah, this actually is a 32-bit board. If you didn't know that, it runs the ST processor. Um, I actually do prefer the 32-bit boards. They're so much easier to upgrade the firmware. You, you just put the bin file, binary file, on the SD card and it picks it up. Whereas before in the 8-bit boards, you'd have to hook up a USB cable, um, and use the Arduino IDE, and possibly load a bootloader. So it was much more of a headache. So this is cool. A lot easier. All right, so I'm just going to move this stuff over. Like I said, the boards are nearly identical. So. One thing I've learned about these Creality printers is that the firmware is not as easy as the other ones are. Like, you have to keep on renaming the actual firmware file. So if, if, if it's actually the same name, if the file name is the same name, it's not going to upgrade. Because you have to keep on changing the name. Anytime you want to upgrade the firmware, you have to change the name of the last firmware. So it's a total headache. Plus, I don't think this actually has an EEPROM, too. So it stores the actual data on the flash card. So like your individual printer settings, Marlin settings, you know, like your jerk settings or whatever, you know, other than stock, saves it to a flash card. So, uh, like, the newer SKR boards actually have an EEPROM built onto them, so which I think are way better. I do my first home with a BL Touch, upgrade the firmware. It's pretty basic, you just copy a bin file over to your SD card. Once I get the electronics, I know dialed in. I'm gonna fish the wire back through this cable thing right here. Yeah, because that way it's not hanging everywhere. So let's do a uh, what's it? Uh, control bed leveling and uh, level bed. So the level bed is actually a G29. So auto home. What was that? Oh, I got back to that. So auto home. Um, is G28 and bed leveling sorry, all right, level bed so G28 is actually homing and then G29 is this this should be by default does it should do a 9 point so it's going to go through and probe 9 points on the bed and uh, yeah with the other one that other printer I did the CR10 I think did 25 points um, I mean, it's a huge bed, and you want the more points, the better, you know, the more accuracy. But this is a pretty small bed, so you don't need to go crazy with it. All right, so I know the electronics work. I'm just going to clean up, get the wires fished in there, and I need to convert the uh, bed uh, to these fixed mounts. So I don't know if this is big enough or not, but you can get these over at Home Depot. They're not expensive. Yeah, because the last thing I want to do is be fighting the bed leveling and the spring adjustment here. Uh, yeah, because you want to make this as flat as possible, so you no longer need the springs. So I'm going to convert that over and be back. Alright, so if you're not familiar with Creality stuff, then they actually have an like eccentric nut here. Sorry, sorry to back. So it's called an eccentric nut, and you tighten it and moves it closer to this. I guess thing had an insane amount of slot before. It's a lot better. I mean, if you can do the, the dual Z upgrade, it's definitely an improvement. Not the actual, well, not the dual motor, because you really don't need a, a dual motor for this size. It's the actual one with a timing belt. Actually, one of the other printers that I did had the timing belt on it, and it was a huge improvement. I mean, it always stays in sync if you have a timing belt. I got some filament right. loaded. Got this all dialed in. Um, got the field touch wrapped in there. So I'm going to do a calibration cube and see how this thing prints out. Can't get this stuff off the bed, the existing stuff you had on there. So, 
it's heating up right now. I guess I'll just uh, do a test. Check out the acceleration, jerk settings, ghosting. Um, yeah, these, these smaller printers are actually better for uh, printing small objects. Less ghosting, less stuff moving around, but the Ender 3 is not a high-end printer anyway, so... I mean, it's it should be good, but it shouldn't be like crazy just because of all this. I mean, it was designed to save cost, you know. I mean, Bowden tubes are horrible. This has one Z axis, so <laughs> you know. I mean, the, the bed is not so bad, but still, like anything like linear rail, ra uh, rails is way better. So, all right. So it's doing its first G twenty eight command, and then once it's done doing G twenty eight, which is you know homing. It's going to go back and do a G729 and probe the bed. But one of the things in this calibration cube I told it to do is to print out 20 skirt layers. And I'm doing that so I can go back here and go to tune. I can create the right offset. At least figure out what the offset is. See if it says Z probe offset. And it's doing the last probe. And it could, should come back here and start putting down here. I try to get this on camera. Um, because I need to do a negative on, on the Z probe. Yeah, okay, we're talking way high here. And it's extruding. Alright, I'm gonna bring this down a lot. I can tell that's at least one. Wow, look at that. See, as you can see, the head go up and down. See right there? As I bring it closer to the bed. Alright, so I'm there in that three. This one right out of there. That's why I do 20 layer lines. Bring it down closer, now it's four. Okay. Uh, that's a little too much, do four. Okay, it's a little bit too much. Three, eight. Okay. Okay. That's uh, still too much, three, six. This guy has a lot of extra beds, so. 3.5, so I went a little bit too aggressive here, 3.4, that's, so this is how you dial in the first layer, okay, I need to go back to 3.5. Uh, let's try 36 again. I like it the layer to be tight. Yeah, another thing too is I really hate these single uh, single sided uh, gears, the extruders. Uh, I definitely prefer the Bond Tech with the dual drive. Um, so one of the things you got to do is I'm going to try to make sure this is not slipping. You know, the filament's not slipping in there. Because that will also create extrusion problems too as well. So, I feel like i got it sort of dialed in here. Um, so I'm going to do the first test cube and then I'll go back do a couple test cubes with different jerk settings and stuff. The first print. Hopefully, that's not too much glare. Uh, the stock settings are pretty good. And this is a small printer, so you're not going to get so much ghosting, but take that off real fast. If you can see that there. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. Actually, very good. Wow. I'm kind of impressed. I don't know if I have to do very much tuning. The Y, a little bit ghosting. Ex extremely small amount. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. All right, that's uh, PLA plus, 25% infill. And the final offset was 3.8. So, um, yeah, if you're in the Orange County area and you need your 3D printer fix, give me a call, number down below. Um, yeah, most of the stuff I get are usually failed, like upgrade attempts. You know, either something gets corrupted or whatever, but I, mean, I do actually upgrades, just Lately, it's just been all failed upgrade attempts I've been fixing. So, all right, cool. Enter three, four dot, two dot, seven board upgrade, and be all touch. All right.